Peter Baker, what can you tell us uh, about uh, your reporting on this? Well, I think one of the things that's caused a lot of conversation about is the state of our politics, right? That's the 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 accelerated uh, nature of political violence that we're seeing. We're now seeing, of course, two unsuccessful, fortunately, assassination attempts uh, against the same candidate, the same former president, in just a couple of months' time. It reminds us of 1968 when there were two successful assassinations of prominent figures, of course. We've all talked about 1968 this year. Uh, reminds us, of course, of Gerald Ford. There are two shots taken at uh, Gerald Ford, I think, within a month's time, both in California, back when he was president. And we forget how how much that can traumatize a country, but for a handful of uh, you know, inches in, 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 in the case of Butler or maybe a few minutes in the case of, of Palm Beach. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, it raises the question of our politics. Uh, at, the, at the debate mm -hmm. last week, the former president said, I took a bullet to the head because of what they have been saying about me, blaming Democrats for their rhetoric. Of course, he wasn't talking about his own rhetoric, which tends to be pretty provocative as well. In that same debate, he instigated in some ways, uh, you know, some people would say violence in, in terms of Springfield, Ohio, by talking about the this fake story about eating dogs and cats, which has resulted in bomb threats, uh, danger to everyday people in Springfield, Ohio. So we're in a state of our country right now where political violence feels uh, increasingly common and, and we're on edge in a lot of ways. And you're reporting on bomb threats and the FBI, Springfield, disrupted by Trump's false migrants claim. Of course, that claim continued over the airwaves over the weekend. Um, the one most notable was J.D. Vance going on uh, CNN on Sunday, speaking with Dana Bash, um, saying that he basically creates these stories to sort of bring the focus and the spotlight on what he wants the spotlight to be on. Take a listen. American media totally ignored this stuff until Donald Trump and I started talking about cat memes. If I have to, if I have to meme, create right. stories so that the American media actually pays attention to the suffering of the American people, then that's what I'm going to do, Dana, because you guys are completely letting Kamala Harris coast. I'm going to, if I have Peter? to create stories, yeah. Yeah. that was uh, telling and transparent. What do you make of that, Peter Baker? Yeah, he, he, you know, he said the quiet part out loud. We're going to say things that we know not to be true or we don't know to be true uh, or we can't prove to be true just in order to draw attention to our issues. Uh, you know, that's that's <laughs> uh, that goes back to the alternative facts. We've been seeing that from, you know, mm -hmm. President Trump, former President Trump now going back eight, nine years. And what's what's striking, of course, is the consequences of this kind of thing. Right. And, and he, you know, he. Former President Trump this week now in the last uh, few days was both the target of and instigator of, you know, a level of, 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 uh, of violence that we, you know, of course, don't want to see in our national political discourse. And, um, you know, I think there's been some reflection on that since Butler, but not a lot. And we've talked about what the Secret Service did wrong or what they should be doing right or how much resources they need as if political violence is simply a, you know, a fact of life. And I suppose it is these days, but we're, we haven't figured out a way to solve our politics in a way that it wouldn't become such a regular thing. Um, you, you know, uh, Reverend Al, there has been violence. The rhetoric has become more violent. And I'm certainly uh, open to people giving us examples of Kamala Harris or Joe Biden uh, saying things like this um, that uh, Donald Trump said, that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs should be executed, uh, that he could assassinate his political rivals using SEAL Team 6, and he still would be immune as long as he was president of the United States. Uh, constantly mocking and ridiculing the the um, the savage attack against Paul Pelosi, uh, a man in his 80s uh, who who could have died while the guy was screaming, "Where's Nancy? Where's Nancy?" A January 6th chant, calling uh, for people to go up and protest on January 6th and 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 to be strong, starting those riots. Uh, and then rewinding as he watched the most savage parts of those attacks uh, and um, telling the Proud Boys to stand back 
and to stand by during the debate. Uh, uh, during, during the debate. I could go on and on and on. Yes, there has been uh, an increase of violence. You know, Donald Trump telling people in his audience to beat the hell out of any protesters or people they disagree with, and he will pay for their legal funds. The amount of violent rhetoric coming from one side really is unprecedented in modern American politics. Now, you know, there's this desperate, desperate attempt uh, to somehow uh, sort of flatten things. And, and you see this in, in the, the campaign as well, where mm -hmm. Donald Trump will do something outrageous. And then we'll hear on the other side, yeah, well, Kamala Harris, she's only done one interview with a Philadelphia station. And you're like, wait, you're, you're starting violence against Haitians and uh, immigrants, legal immigrants, and you're comparing that to how many interviews Kamala Harris. But that's the sort, that's the sort, of, uh, sort of false moral equivalency we seem to be living with these days. No, and it, it is something consistent. You know, one would have thought uh, and hoped that after uh, Donald Trump survived an assassination attempt that a bullet literally hit his ear, that he would have uh, had some kind of reflection, some kind of moving away from trying to really exacerbate uh, the tensions. Uh, the opposite has happened. Some of what you just cited, him talking about uh, Nancy Pelosi's husband and others, happened again since he was shot. So even though all of us denounced that shooting and, and did it uh, in a very de de definite and vociferous way and denounced whatever uh, this assassination attempt was yesterday, even though the right wing tabloids are saying this guy was a left wing, uh, uh, left wing nut. Uh, he voted for Trump. I don't know how you make him a left wing nut, but whoever he was, he should be denounced and prosecuted at the, at the full extent of the law, to the full extent of the law. But at the same time, Donald Trump is putting in real danger Haitians and blacks in Springfield yes. uh, by, and we've seen the bomb threats and all already there, by him saying they're eating people's pets and then his vice presidential candidate admitting they're making this up because they're giving Kamala Harris a free ride. So let me get this right. Because you <laughs> think they're giving Kamala Harris, your presidential opponent, a free ride, you can just make up and racially profile people, which is consistent with Donald Trump's career from Put birtherism all the way back to when he was cited by the Justice Department for discrimination against housing. It's always racism. That's always where he goes back to, and he does not have any compunction at all about putting people at risk, which is what's happening in Springfield, Ohio, right now.